And they've backed Oscar's fortune. 155 currently with the WOP as the light flashes. Set for action. Gates spring and they're racing. Oscar's Fortune stepped cleanly. Gold citation from deep out began sharply auspicious just behind them with Go Carter. Blue Lagoon then came never the twain soaring solo and settling down a clear last is influencing as the hot pot Os Oscar's Fortune leads them. They settle at the 650. Pike takes hold. Oscar's Fortune leads. Gold citation. Three deep next. Next of all is Go Carter. Over on the inside to Blue Lagoon. Auspicious back in the middle of the filly from Soaring Solo, Never the Twain, and the tail ender at the top of the straight is influencing. Oscar's Fortune being nursed by Pike down to the 300. About three quarters to a length, Gold Citation. Two lengths behind them, Blue Lagoon, followed by Auspicious. He livens up Oscar's Fortune. Oscar's Fortune tested a length and a half clear. Gold Citation battling, but Oscar's has got them beaten. Oscar's Fortune far too good. He's big, raw, and he's got plenty of talent. Oscar's Fortune beat Gold Citation, Auspicious. Third from Blue Lagoon, never the twain. Then influencing and go Kana next home and trailing them all in his soaring solo. Oscar's fortune. Too good makes it two for two. Big raw looking son of rich enough. Willie Pike just nursed him along, educating the horse through his gears there. You can tell that he has a lot to learn but what he does have is enormous potential oscar's fortune two for two beats gold citation who wouldn't shirk it auspicious back there in third place blue lagoon fourth home smart horse from dion luciani's yard by rich enough from oscar award for Loma farms they've got a nice one on their hands he really is an x-factor type of a horse oscar's fortune and has won this very comfortably from gold citation Game tenacious, if nothing else, there from a wide gate having to work, but no match for Oscar's fortune. And third home, auspicious, well beaten in behind those as we wait for the numbers to become official. The interim placings are 2534, 2534, 5796. They ran 3316. The sectional, and he was still working it all out at the finish. A length and a half by one and a quarter. The margins there, and uh, Pike is about to bring him back. So a, a double there this afternoon for Willie, who uh, got the job done on Sisu Warrior in the third. He goes back to back with Oscar's Fortune, who also goes back to back. The next event, the Western Race Picks handicap with six Lady Tornado and seven set the scene, both coming out there. Eight to do battle over the 1,200 metres at 3.20. And as we join Lockie Taylor, this fellow, he looks as though he's got something a little bit special under the bonnet. He certainly does, Darren. He's a very, very exciting horse, Oscar's Fortune. Two from two now. Ian Gladding joins me on his birthday, of all things. Obviously representing Dion Luciani, as he always does. Ian... We spoke about this horse a couple of weeks ago when he started at Belmont Park. Things didn't go right for him a week earlier at Northam. How was he today behind the scenes and how do you view today's performance? Yeah, it was very bright today. Um, just from what I saw on TV, they just locked it behind him. Obviously, had that hiccup where he didn't go in the other week. Um, but we sort of got him figured out now. It's just a case of brute strength with as many uh, barrier attendants as they can. Just lock on him, literally pick him up and throw him in. And, and once he's in there, he's fine. After his last start win, you suggested that perhaps he might even be better chasing a horse. But today, $1.50, Willie Pike took luck out of the equation and they were never catching him. Yeah, that's right. I mean, Willie said before the race, he sort of preferred not to lead. I think he's probably going to be better not leading, but uh, he just jumped and put himself there. So it is what it is. From here, he's two from two. A race like the Placid Arc in the Summer Carnival is worth half a million dollars. Obviously, the stable won that with My Bella May last year. Is that the way he likely heads? Yeah, he's a horse with a huge amount of potential. Uh, Willie's got a really good opinion of him. The whole stable is, is uh, yeah, definitely be looking at those races for sure. Can you draw comparisons between him and a filly like My Bella May from 12 months ago? Oh, it, it, it's hard. That, you know, different horses, and uh, you know, they're all good horses. Horse like Duchess of Gossip too has gone out of the paddock. And she's having a break now. Um, but th this one, it. it Real good horses tend to, at some point, they do something they shouldn't be able to do. And I think you saw that the other week when the horse trialled on the, on the Monday and raced on the Wednesday. That's, 
bit, bit sort of a um, bit random, bit out of the box, but it, it did that really well. And you know, all the real good horses I've been associated with, at some point they do something that, as I say, they probably shouldn't be able to do, but they do it anyway. Um, that's what separates the good ones from the average ones. It certainly does. He's definitely something special. I can't wait to see what's in store for Oscar's Fortune moving forward. Well done and happy birthday. Beautiful. Thanks, mate. There's Ian Gladding after the win of Oscar's Fortune. William Pike still coming back to scale, really taking his time aboard the horse, who obviously didn't have a great experience the first time he went to the races at Northern Scott, but he hasn't put a hoof wrong since then. And Wow, he looks progressive. He looks super lucky. He's won four, I think, 400 metre jump outs, and he's now won 2,000 metre races, one in a midweek and then one on a Saturday. The punters did not forget to back him here. They didn't forget to back him on debut either. He was uh, very well supported, both at that northern meeting where he was, a, uh, in the end, a late scratching, but then they punted him on the Wednesday, they punted him on the Saturday, and you can fully understand why. He looks like he's got a huge amount of raw ability. He's still got a lot to learn about racing, but at the moment, he's just an excitement machine, this horse. Willie Pike is just weighing in, and we'll get a word. Willie, uh, the first question's always going to be, how was he behind the gates? Uh, he's perfect. Um, he's never naughty, he's just a little bit stubborn. Um, and I think he's definitely one of those horses who don't want to have too many victories or he'll be stubborn for the rest of his life. He went in a lot better today than last time and I think he'll go in a lot better next time as well. And I think next preparation you'll never even know. He's an amazing animal because uh, Ian was saying ideally you'd like to sit him but when he leaves the gates that well over a thousand you've got no option. No, not really and he's got such a lovely stride. To sit from those circumstances you wouldn't be doing him any justice. Um, jumps to the front, they're not, not going to see him. Maybe in better races later on he probably will sit but Right now we're enjoying the trouble-free run. Saw on the way back that he took a nice stop there just to have a look around. He's certainly taking it all in. Yeah, he is, and it's not an ideal system here where we branch one off from the pack. It's, it's pretty tricky for them. So there's a lot for him to learn, a lot for him to take in, and each time he's doing it a bit better. In the previous, Cecil Warrior, tradesman like Everett? Yeah, he, like I said, he, he probably never wins by much, but um, he's just always in the finish, so you can't, can't argue with that, can you? Cannot. Well done. Cheers. 7.96, Oscar's Fortune low-flying to take out race number four with William Parker board.